Welcome to day 18. The time is 12 noon, and as you can see, I'm still in the hotel. Why am I still in the hotel? Well, I, I started a bit late. I think I started 11 o'clock today, and then I covered around five kilometers uh, in, in the direction I need to be going. And I don't know how, but I realized that I have lost or forgot a little piece of kit. Uh, I really can't remember why, because basically it was my head torch. For some reason, it just came to me, obviously not very far from my hotel at all, 5K, uh, that I didn't have my, ho my head torch with me. I really don't know why, because obviously I don't need it at all now. I have no idea how that came to my head, but it did. So I checked where I normally keep it. It's not there. I checked, um, which is in my pocket, um, in a little bag in my pocket, secure. Um, then I checked my electronics bag inside inside the main bag. Uh, it was not there either. And then I thought, well, where was the last time I had it? I had it on the bed uh, and I had kind of stuff charging on the side of the bed and I didn't see it this morning. So I thought, okay, it's probably, I've probably forgotten the hotel room. Obviously I, I checked the room as much, best I can, but I thought maybe it fell off the bed um, where the bed is kind of up against the wall. So I flagged a tuk-tuk down. I stopped all my tracking where I was, uh, it took me probably 20 seconds <laughs> to flag uh, Tuk Tuk. Came back here, it cost me, what's something like 10, 15p. Um, walked straight into the hotel, because I'm kind of like, I didn't want to ask to say I've forgotten something in case they go and check themselves and then say, no, there's nothing there. Um, so I basically just walked straight into the hotel, up the stairs and back into my room. And as you can see, there's the bed. There's the head torch. <laughs> it was basically the side of the bed there where the socket is. I just had a load of stuff charging there. My phone, battery, lamp, everything. And the light was just there. And in the night, I must have just knocked it. Fell down the side. Total schoolboy error. Um, basically, all my other stuff was there lined up. And I didn't need my head torch, obviously, this morning. Uh, but it was there. It was there on the floor, so I've got it. So that's it. <laughs> back, back to the plan. I'm really glad that I got it. It's, it's just a little thing. Obviously, it's not crucial. I've got a light on my phone if I need it, but it's really useful. And all the kit that I'm carrying, I've done a lot of research into every single piece of kit. And this is the lightest um, full swivel USB rechargeable. And all my stuff is USB, so I don't need to get any spare batteries or a different cable for this. Um, it's all thought through, obviously. Um, and I really didn't want to lose it because that would mean I probably couldn't get one. I'm not even sure if I can get one in Kathmandu for the, next, for the second half, but uh, I've got it. So all was well. That's a little morale booster. Um, so I'm going to go outside. I'm going to get a tuk-tuk. I'm going to, following GPS on my watch, I'm going to get him to drop me off exactly where I stopped and then reset, well, not reset, but then start all the tracking and carry on as if nothing had happened. And just like that, I'm back in exactly the spot where I realized that I'm missing a little piece of kit. I still can't remember how I, why I even thought um, that I might be missing the head torch. I, do, I just, obviously, I don't need it here. I don't know how it came to my head. Um, felt like a bit of a surgical operation, just perfect, you know, uh, stop all the tra tracking. Tuk Tuk came along, went into the hotel room. There it was, exactly where I thought it would be. Came out, straight Tuk Tuk Tuk, straight back. Everyone understood. Um, so that's it. So I, I lost, I lost 20 minutes for that. Stopped in a little, uh, side of the road. It stopped at a place for a chow mein. This is what it looks like. I've almost finished it. It was, uh, it was as big as it can be. I'm going to get another one of these now. Just show you around a little bit. Uh, it's just a really nice kind of little place. Yeah, I'm going to go up one of those kitchens there as well. Uh, I stopped uh, to air my foot as well. I, this is the first day that I didn't plaster up my blister because I thought it got as good as it can be. But um, I'm probably a little bit too soon to do that, so I'm just going to put a little bit of tape around it to protect it. So I've stopped somewhere to eat, and I thought this is a good opportunity to show you the very traditional, very standard kind of meal that you can get anywhere here. Uh, first of all, I'll show you the view. This is the room I'm in. So it's, it's a little bit bare, but the 
goes out onto the front. A couple of goats there, tied up while the owner's out shopping. Uh, so this is the dish. There's always a plate of uh, cucumbers and onions. Rice, this is the dal, this is like a pop down thing. Don't always get that. Always get this green veg, which I think is just spinach or type of spinach. And then there's always like a vegetable curry type place and the chapati or ruddi. They call it ruddi here. Uh, and they always give you some water. Sometimes it's just in a jug, sometimes it's in a sealed bottle. So this is it, this is a classic meal. Uh, it's lunchtime and I'm looking forward to it. I always try to get food when I'm passing uh, larger villages because this is the kind of meal here and this is, this is nutritious, you know, you get green vegetables um, for all, all the vitamins, minerals, dal, lots of lentils, pro good proteins, um, rice, potato, good uh, carbs. In rural areas you can always get some, something to eat everywhere but a lot of the time it's just really simple, it's just really carby, like it's just noodles in, um, with like a packet for flavouring kind of thing, which is fine for calories but I wouldn't want to just eat that every day, um, there's not much nutrition there and I need as much nutrition as possible for all the recovery. So when I get through to a big uh, village I always try to get something like this, uh, as much green veg as possible as well. Another point about how classic this dish is. When I came to this restaurant, the guy can speak a little bit of English, um, but he didn't ask me what I wanted to eat. So this is, that's how classic this dish is. You know, I sat down, he said, I thought he was bringing me the menu. He said, 10 minutes, sit there for 10 minutes kind of thing. I was like, okay, fine, I don't know why. Um, but uh, he asked me whether I wanted meat or vegetarian. Um, and I know that Basically, the vegetarian version of the dish is, is always vegan anyway. Um, so I just said veg vegetarian. I, I was still kind of waiting for the menu and then the food arrived. So, I mean, this, this is what you get.